rivers breathe sick like venereal diseases. Every day I'm trying to top Jesus. You know what it is? Let's go. We're in the geeks chat. We're vibing with uh, Torres Finney, the Punisher. Let's go. How you doing, brother? I'm doing great, brother. Happy to be back on here, man. I always look. Hey, y'all been with me since the beginning, Guill Guillotine uh, Geeks, and uh, I'm I'm excited. Happy to be on the show. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Let's go, man. Let's go. So we got a couple topics to cover here. Uh, we all know that you know you got a big contender series fight coming up August 20th. You're going back. So let's kind of take it back for a second because you did fight on contender series already, right? You get the second round finish, and Dana White doesn't award that contract, right? So just to fill in the fans a little bit, right? So the next fight you take on the regional scene, you absolutely obliterate this guy with a highlight KO. So what was the process, right? Because you go on the contender series, you get that finish you're thinking about. And, you know, obviously, you know, that's what, exactly what he's looking for, right? Is putting guys away. And it just doesn't come to fruition. So what's kind of like the emotions going into that? Like after that, I would say. Well, you know, it's, you know, like in the process of like just getting, you know, on the contender series, going through the whole thing, you know, it, it was different, you know, to me, you know, now me stepping in and fighting, I didn't think that was too much different. Cause I'm like, man, I do this, you know, I used to wrestle, you know, we walk on the mat, we don't really know who we're going against majority of the time we shake hands, we go and we go at it, you know? So I like that aspect of it for the contender series, but you know, going through the whole motions and, and everything else along with it, getting the win was the main thing that mattered to me. As in this next one, getting the win is the main thing that will forever matter to me going into any competition. If I win, everything else will fall into place. Like I said, my performance will speak for itself. And, yeah, man, I felt like, you know, having to deal with some adversity in that first round, coming back in that second round, getting a finish, you know, rear naked choke finish and doing what I had to do, I thought, man, I gave myself a big opportunity, you know, to get a contract. And then, you know, after listening to what Dana said, you know, Dana, you know, he still, you know, gave me props and things, but, you know, he just felt like I needed a little bit more experience. And I wasn't necessarily – I was a little mad at it at first, but after about five minutes, I was like, man, I won the fight. And that's all that matters to me because I'm only – I can only control what I can control, and I control what I can do. Now, could I control having a better performance? Yes. Um, and that's more to me continue to getting more experience and getting more training. But – Yes, I definitely could have controlled a little bit things better in the fight, but that's again that's coming from learning. And like I said, I've always wanted more fights. I always always wanted more experience. So I'm just learning and growing as a fighter, and I'm excited for an opportunity that um, is coming up soon. That's awesome. That's awesome. Because yeah, I mean, anybody that gets put in your position, you know, you, there's different ways that people can react. And you know, coming out with that next performance, what was kind of the training like looking into that? Because you did have a decent amount of time off in between that last contender fight and then that crazy knockout. So what was kind of your focus? What do you think that you would say you improved on the most going from that last contenders fight to the last highlight KO you had at combat night? Yeah, man, I was really excited. One was mainly my, my confidence and two, yeah, I definitely gotten better in the striking department. Um, had opportunity and blessed to got a chance to work with Dwayne Lutwick. Um, he, he was really big help to me going forward. Um, yeah, it was, it was pretty awesome. Cause I had the opportunity to go to, um, uh, his gym and train a good bit, train with a lot of those guys in Denver, um, at team elevation, got a chance to meet up with, uh, Trevor Whitman and C Gaethje and San Hagen and all those Curtis blaze and all those guys basically in Denver, they all about training with each other. So it was really cool. Neil Magny, he was actually big help for a little, little bit of me in, into this camp. So, um, you know, just get an opportunity just to see those guys and be able to work some striking with Dwayne. It really helped. And TJ Dillashaw. So it was a blessing to be able to have that going forward. And uh, for the people that probably do or don't know, but like I was uh, selected to be on Ultimate Fighter. And I was going through that whole process. And, you know, it was just literally the day before they about to take our phones so we can do filming. You know, I just got hit with something. They went a different route. Um, you know, we're mad at it necessarily. So, I was like, well, at least I ain't got to cut weight twice in the span of uh, four weeks. So I just like, oh, it is what it is. And we got back on the regional scene getting to looking. Like, okay, what's next for a brother? Like, what do I need to look for? What do I need to find? And we was blessed with an opportunity to get on a combat night. Now, granted, I had already had the opportunity to fight on the contender series. It was already presented. I had already signed a contract four weeks before that fight. And I knew it was a risk taking that fight still, but 
a brother needed i need reps i need live reps i, I don't i don't like not fighting like i want to be in there so i was like if i'm going to get in there like let's go like let's not wait uh, i don't want to wait until what we got in what less than two weeks for that to be my first time stepping in the cage i want my first time stepping in the cage as many times as possible up until those bigger fights so up until that next fight so um yeah i just took that opportunity and it turned into a home uh a home run hit so dude that's crazy so you had a contender series you had your second contender series locked in and you were like i still need these reps yes um i was it was talking with management talking with coaches you know it was presented to me yes could you lose yes could you uh get an injured and something happens yes could a bad performance negate you from getting that contender series contract pulled away yes that, those are all possibilities but you know, when you're trusting yourself and you like, I'm confident and and I went against a vet. I mean, he was a 28 fight vet, vet, had 15 wins. I mean, I mean, he was just very experienced. And I was like, you know, you got to definitely take this guy very serious. And um, you train with Michael Bisping, train with a lot of guys throughout Luke Rocco. So like, he has some experience and been in the game for a very, very long time. So, um, yeah, man, I definitely had to take it seriously. And I, yeah, went out there and, uh, again, did the best that I could and we accomplished the game plan. When you uh, landed that that knockout blow, that we'll we'll show clips of it when this interview comes out. I'll make sure I put. You know, uh, did you know immediately that that was just going to go viral on the internet, bro? So. So I know like how combat night is. They are like big on like social media, a big on. I was like, little did I know like this was gonna happen because it's on combat night. Like combat night gave me a great opportunity, gave me a great platform. Little did I know like me hitting that shot was gonna go as viral as it did. But knowing how combat night is, that doesn't surprise me. But I mean, my plan was just going in and just do me, and whatever comes of it, it comes of it, and. You know, for me to land that knockout, and like I said, time stopped for me. It was so slow. When I landed it, and I just slowly saw him falling forward, I turned around, and I was like, well, what? I mean, I was thinking, I was like, what should you do next? It's like a thousand things going through my head. I was like, you know what? Just turn around and walk away. And, you know, just because I knew he was, I just knew he was out. Like, it didn't even feel like I hit him that hard. You know, I just, I just felt the, mm. and I saw him falling, and I was like, I know he's out. Like he's out. You don't fall like this, and I know he's out. So I just turned around and walked away. You know, making the walk off, and I'll talk with my team. I was like, like we got a good bit of strikers here, and a good bit of strikers around the area. And I'm like, out of all people, I never think I'll be the one to have a walk off knockout. So, <laughs> but hey, man, it, it was it's pretty awesome to get. It was. That's pretty sweet. That's pretty sweet. So, what do we know about this guy we're fighting? All right, he's an Australian. Uh, looks like he's like a pretty tall frame for 85, 62. So have you done your homework? Do you do you guys kind of have a way that you're approaching this fight without giving away too much of a game plan? Yes, yes, yeah, definitely. We definitely have a, a real, real, really good game plan for Cam. You know, Cam is a tall, long ranging striker. He has a lot of different weapons. I'm um, excited for him. You know, ever since he moved to City Kick Boxing, and you can definitely tell he's evolved and gotten better. Um, so yeah, definitely uh, see a lot of pros and cons um, of both ends for him. Um, I'm really excited for the matchup. You know, I just think what I bring to the table is going to be really hard for him to be able to deal with. Um, he, he has some, you know, tendencies, and I just think we're going to take advantage of him and, yeah, make the best of him, man. I'm really excited for the matchup. Uh, I'm, I'm loving the platform we, we, we've both been given, and I really think that uh, I will 100% will will have my hand raised um, by the end of that night, 100%. Let's go. Because I, I was doing a little bit of research on him myself, and uh, I saw that he was actually booked to be on last year's Contender Series, but he withdrew. So I don't know if that's injury-related or if you know something about that. Um, It was something that I read up on that it was dealing with, like, something they found in his medicals, and he couldn't get it done through that time, so he had to pull out. Um, that's actually was a second time occurrence because he was supposed to fight for one, I believe, and something like that happened again. So um, I don't know what that medical recurrence is. I hope, it, hope it's all cleared. You know, I don't want to get his fight week and it's not fully cleared on whatever is going on. Um, but um, you, you definitely tell he has some withdrawals here and there and like pullouts here and there. And then like the, the time between fights, 
Um, he's only fought twice in 2020, you know, like two MMA fights since that time. Now, granted, he did do Muay Thai bouts, you know, so you have to also throw that into account. You're like, yeah, he has been and actually get into live competition and going through the motion of a fight. But I always say that's not the same as MMA. You know, it, it's a little different, man. It's different when in there when you have to implement not only the striking, the grappling, the pace, the cage. You know, you have to implement a whole lot of other things along with than just Muay Thai or kickboxing. So, um, you know, definitely a lot of respect to him. But um, I, I, I really do believe like the growth that I've done over this past year, um, along with the skill set that I already have, is just going to be a huge problem for him to deal with. For sure, for sure. And so. How are you saying, how would you think, um, what like advantages do you think you have, you know, just having been there, done that, you've seen this exa exact process, right? You know where you're going, you know how the videotaping is going to go, you know what kind of food they're going to be giving you. Like how, what advantages that give you over a guy that's just getting there for the first time and, and kind of, you know, maybe blinded by the lights a little bit. Yeah, man, you know, this is a big stage, you know, I know he's fought in King of the Ring, but it's not the same, you know, like I fought, heck, I fought in big cars icon and, you know, fought in cars like Combat Night, Combat Night had a huge crowd, Aries, Aries had some really big crowds as well, so like, I, you know, fighting in bigger crowds or arenas, whatever, it, for me, that's nothing new because I've wrestled in front of thousands and thousands of people in my state championships or football, you know, big games, stuff like that is not different to me. The problem that I think they might come into it for him is walking in there. It's not as many people as you would think. You might have some people scream here and there. You might hear that one lady, my, my mom screaming really loud, probably. But <laughs> like, but besides that, like you don't really have that many people in there. When you walk in, you ready, you ready, fight. You know, there's no announcements, there's no waiting, there's no, you know, there's not none of that. You ready, you ready, fight. Get in there and fight. And I like it like that, to be honest with you. I, I I get a little sick of sometimes the announcements because it's like, bro, we've been waiting this whole time. Like, we've been waiting for 10 to 12 weeks. We've been waiting all day in the back, you know, warming up. Like, we're ready to go now. So, um, now I will say once once that Bruce Buffer, like, announcement comes, I think that will be special. I, I won't rush that. But, uh, but, but, like, right now I'm, like, ready to go. So, a brother is so ready to go and you have to be ready to like get on your gas pedal now because I'm a, you know, I'm gonna come out and I come out fast and I'm a fast starter always. So uh, you gotta be on your gas pedal and be ready to go. And some people just not be ready to go sometimes. So it just depends on how he, you know, he's prepared for that and be ready for it. And then he's got a really good team. So um, I'm expecting the best uh, version of Cam and I expect him to come out there and be prepared for a whole lot of things. So um, I definitely, I'm not going into this fight thinking, oh, it's easy, easy money, but I'm really confident in my skill set and understand the uh the th the obstacles that's in front of me, and I'm more than confident that I will overcome anything that uh shows up. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, man. We're excited for it. Um, you know, kind of turning the tables a little bit. Um, you know, I know that this is kind of the best time of the year coming around. We got Dana White's contender series on Tuesday, football starting up. Have you gotten the new uh, NCAA? Oh, have I? Oh, man, come on. Yes, bro. I've played that so much, bro. I love it. I've been really, like, grinding on Road to Glory, um, Road to Glory. And, man, you know, I'm a quarterback. I started off at Northwestern, then I transferred to Auburn. So I'm in my sophomore season right now playing a little bit. It's so funny with the grades and all that extra stuff. It's actually – it's all it's, it's realistic. It's actually what literally I went through in college when I was playing football. But it's so fun to go through that whole ordeal. It's it's fun game, fun game. Who's your team? Who's your team? I'm a Georgia fan. Go Dawgs, baby. I'm a Georgia okay. fan. So, yeah, I like Georgia. Um, I play with Georgia a good bit. Um, they got a really good team on there. It's hard to play defense on there. Like, it's it's very offensive-oriented because, like, depending on what difficulty you play, certain guys miss tackles in, like, weird ways. You're like, how do you miss that tackle? Right. You know, it's, like, it's very offensive-oriented, but – you know, you you get you gotta make you gotta take advantage of the stops or the bad kicks. It's hard to kick on that game. That's the other thing. It's hard to kick on that game. So besides those like little two things overall, it's, it's a really great game. You have an NFL team that you follow? Yes, big Pittsburgh Steelers fan. Been a Steelers fan ever since I was young. I love the Steelers, man. Um, I got into them because of their hardcore defense. You know, it was a defensive team with James Harrison, Lamar Woodley, Palomalu. Uh, Brent Keisel, uh, Casey Hampton, I mean, James Ferrier, you name it. I mean, they had all types of killers. Ryan Clark, Ike Taylor, like those guys. I love the Steelers, man. Hans Ward, you know, they were just a gritty team. Yeah. Like you couldn't break them. 
You know, they will break you. And, and I, I like that type of stuff. I like that type of style of football. And I miss that type of style of football because everything's so pass heavy now. I miss those teams that would just grind it out and beat you up. And you're like, what the freak? You have to go through that. Like, um, the closest things I remember to that is like the Seattle defense, you know, or the Denver defense is 2016. Um, and, these, and the 49ers defense these past few years has been like that. You know, they've been grindy and gritty, but um, – you, you don't really see that as much as anymore. It's more like who's going to be the first one to score 35 points. So, yeah, uh, but I, I'm a defensive guy. So that's, that, that's the reason why I'm like that. <laughs> What's your prediction for the Steelers this year? You think they're going to make some noise or, I mean, you guys still got some uh, questions at quarterback, huh? We do got questions at quarterback, but I feel like we got all the skill positions, man. I mean, we got a lot of different receivers. Um, I like our running back room. Defense is still on point. You know, we still, Still got to fill in some like those younger areas around that linebacker position, but I feel like we're gonna be really good overall this year. I still look, we're in the, we're in the hardest division. We got the Ravens, got the Bengals, got the Browns. Look, AFC North been the hardest division for the longest, so it's gonna be hard for us, but we still games we unexpectedly still like. I heck, we always beat the Ravens unexpectedly sometimes, and then we always the Bengals is usually a split, or the Browns usually a split. So it depends on how we win those divisional games. Uh, but because now they allow seven teams in the playoffs, I still like I like our chances. So. Yeah, I mean, you guys are like known for just always making the playoffs. It seems like every season you guys could just it doesn't even matter what happens, you just end up straggling in. But uh, exactly. Mike Tomlin never had a losing season. He finds a way for some god given reason. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's got to be exciting, you know. Big season, a lot of lot of questions to be answered. But uh, another turn of focus, we got UFC three hundred five big middleweight matchup. Yes, we do. Izzy and Drikus. What's your what's your take on that? We like to get a good prediction out of guys. Well, so with Israel, you know, Israel's granted legend, Hall of Famer, one of the greatest middleweights of all time. A lot of respect to him. Problem is, you know, there's a lot of word going around about him trying to put on a little bit more muscle. Um, a lot of people say he's not necessarily gain weight. You know, people keep talking about he's 230 right now, 225. But they say he's always been around like the 215-ish mark anyway. But he's put on a little bit of muscle. Um, he's taking time off, did his whole thing. I always said, even though you take that time off and prepared yourself like putting on bulky muscle, all right, yes, you might train with it, you might do live session with it, sparring with it, da da da. If you feel stronger, but that takes away from your elusiveness. What made Izzy great? How quick his kicks were, how quick his hands were, how fast and agile he was on his feet. If he's a lot more like flat footed and able, like a lot more able to be hit, I think Drake is going to have a very huge advantage because you're not going to be able to out-muscle Drake no matter how much muscle you put on. You're not going to be able to out-bully Drake no matter how much size you try to put on because that he's always been that. So you're not going to try to put yourself in a situation to some trying to be something that you've never been. Like, I would divulge more to being more of yourself than trying to pack on size to prepare for him. Yes, it's good to be stronger. I'm not taking away from that. But to add that to your game now, getting ready for a guy like him, I don't think that's going to do as much service as most people would think it would really do because it takes time to develop. It, it's not just a few months. It literally takes about a year to, like, really set yourself up to, like, be bigger, stronger, and, like, be able to still fight that same way. So I think Drikas is, uh, is actually going to have a little bit of an advantage, and I actually think he's going to win this fight. I think Drikas win this fight by decision, if not finish. He's powerful, man. And if he gets inside on Izzy, man, I really think he's going to do some real damage. Um, Drikas, Drikas is a guy that, like, I think – like, people walk forward on Izzy, but people are scared to engage. Um, I don't think Drake is going to be scared to engage, and I think that's going to be the difference maker. Drake is going to walk forward and actually fight him. So – I think Drinkus wins this fight, man. I really do. That's a that's a very good take. That was extensive. You gave every bit of backing. That was that was impressive. That was, it was like almost like you prepared for that. It's like you knew that was coming. I, I, yeah, man, dude. I tell dude, I watch so much film on everything, dude. It's like it's just I that I, I just really feel like that's what helps me as a fighter. It's like being deep on the details, like that, and that's how I used to be as a football player. Like details on top of details on top of details. So like, I'm gonna watch film. I'm gonna stay dialed in. I'm gonna like try my best to know everything. And I just think that helps me as a fighter. Like, it's never a time I go into a fight and I don't know what's coming. You know, you might surprise me with a little small like minor detail here and there. But after I figure, after you show me that, 
it's going to be in the back of my brain and you won't be able to get that on me again. So, you know, it's just some small things that I'm continuing to grow on. But, yeah, watching film is huge in my life. I got to ask one more after that. After that take, I got to get one more take. Hamza and Whitaker. Oh, bro. <laughs> I'm, if anybody knows me, I'm a big Hazma Shamaya fan. I love Shamaya. I love Shamaya. But that's going to be a hard fight. Now, because it's five rounds, that's why I think it's going to be tough. But as crazy as it sounds, I mean, with all these pullouts, yes, I know he's been sick and all that stuff, but you're giving Shamaya time to actually, like, get in cardio shape. You're giving him time to get in shape and be prepared. So, Shamaya, you got to be ready to go five rounds. Do not sprint all your energy out in round number one or round number two. That's going to be the key, though. Shamaya is a very fast starter. I mean, he don't – that the moment that 459 hits, he's already on you. So, like – he ain't wasting a second. Can Whitaker withstand that sprint? If he can withstand the sprint, he has a chance. Which I think if it hits third, fourth, fifth round, I mean, Whitaker has got to be the highest favorite regardless. If it hits third, fourth, he might be at even a risk of finishing Shamaya. But that first and second round, that sprint, oh my gosh. And that's the question. Like, if Shamaya sprints on him like that, can Whitaker survive it? Because we saw what Drikas was able to do. And Drikas got him out of there in two rounds. Now, granted, that was a three-round fight, but he still got him out of there in three rounds. I mean, in two rounds. If Shamaya is able to pick up the pace a little bit more and sprint on him, we don't know. And we always hear about how Whitaker, we don't know what Whitaker shows up. I mean, lately, we still have the Whitaker that does Whitaker. Like, Whitaker shows up. It just depends on what if Shamaya's game plan. He has to conserve his energy a little bit. You can start fast, but you ain't got to blow your load trying to, like, finish. Like, let the finish come to you. He is blowing his load trying to force the finish. And it's crazy. But he's able to get guys out of there, the elite guys out of there. But when you saw when guys are able to stave it off, like a Gilbert Burns, like a Kamara Usman, it makes him have to dig deeper. And those guys are able – I think those guys are fearing the takedown so much they're not able to engage. And I think after Whitaker feels that first or maybe second round, he's not going to be scared to engage. He may, I mean, the man went against Joel Romero's wrestling. So I don't think he's going to be scared to engage after he feels what Hasmat is really about. So it'll be an interesting fight. I hope Shamav wins. I'm, I'm, I'm going with Shamav. I really hope he wins, but I don't, I, don't, I just don't know. It's going to be a hard fight. That's a, that's a great fight. Let's go. All right. Well, I got one last question. You, you know where you're going for your post-fight meal? Yeah, um, we always go to this place called the Charcoal. Now, I have one of my other sponsors there. He's going to be there. He said he got some steak places for us to uh, think about. I'm down for a steak place. I love Lolo's Chicken and Waffles. Their fried chicken, uh, their soul food is phenomenal. I love it in Vegas. So, yeah, I'm going to spend an extra day in Vegas anyway after. So, yeah, I'm um, – yeah, I'm I'm looking to eat eat really good. <laughs> I'm looking to eat really good. We're right, gonna be tearing man. it up, man. We're gonna be tearing Everybody, it up. Everybody, make sure you're tuned in August 20th, week one of the contender series. He's coming back. He's week running two. it. Oh, week two, week, week two, two of the contender series. So make sure we're dialed in. The boy, the Punisher, he's coming out to get a finish. Any last message for everybody out there? Um, thank you, man. Thank you for all the support. I want to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for giving me the opportunity and blessings to be able to do this. Um, I want to thank all my team, my coaches, Agogi Combatters. I love them so much for all the efforts that they put into me. Uh, Matt Harris, Sterling Peace, Larry Scott for all the work that they do with me. Um, PKP, John and Gannon Hampton for all the things that they do for me with strength and conditioning and training. Um, sponsors from Johnny Jones to Robert White to uh, uh, Coach B, Wham Bam. You know, like those guys are really big for me. And, uh, yeah, thank my family, man. Thank I love mom, dad, uncle, granddad, grandma, you know, all the people in my life. So it's been a blessing and I'm excited. I'm excited for all the support and I'm excited to, uh, you know, pay the, pay the uh, efforts back, you know, pay, pay it forward and uh, go and get this win August 20th. Yes, sir. Let's go. Always a pleasure, man. You take it Thanks. easy. Have yes, sir. You're the man. We'll talk to you soon. Yes, sir. Your diseases, every day I'm trying to top Jesus. Pray that I'm alive for the day that you've seen it. 